it's Deborah again, and today we're going to work on the Microsoft Word Module 3 SAM project. I have already been to SAM and downloaded the instructions that are here for the orange whisk, and I've gotten the starter file, which is in front of me. I've clicked the button that allows me to edit the document and I've changed the name from underbar 1 to underbar 2. And in fact I've already uh, completed steps 1 and 2. Um, 1 asked us to change the document margins to something called moderate. That was using the layout tab and the margins tool. And I've changed the overarching theme using the design tab and the themes tool to meet the specification in the instructions. I've changed the theme to office. Now we're going to create a letterhead by inserting a shape. So at the beginning of the document, so I have rectangle section and the last item from my list is the round diagonal corner rectangle. All I have is a crosshair, so I can draw that rectangle, basically any size and shape, for starters, because we'll be changing the attributes uh, forthwith. In fact, item B asks us to resize the shape to a height of 0.75 and a width of 6.4 inches. Drawing Tools Contacts tab Format. Let's go far to the right and we can open up the size dialog. In the size dialog I'm going to change the height to 0 0.75 and I will change the width to 6.4 as instructed. We can see the radio buttons are already set at absolute which will ensure that the size is exactly as we specify. Now we need to set the position of the shape to uh, something called position in top left with square text wrapping. So that will be under the position tool and we can just hover over the different options until we find position in top left with square text wrapping. Happens to be my first choice under with text wrapping. I will select that. Change the text wrapping to top and bottom. Well, the arrange group wrap text tool is where we need to go and choose the top and bottom. Step three, sub-step E, change the shape style. Look in the shape styles group. and find Moderate Effect Orange Accent 2. Alright, luckily I found the Moderate Effect Orange Accent 2 uh, rather quickly. You can see that it's the third column and the fifth row in my case. Always hover over until you get the hint box so that you know that you're correct, and then select. F. Add the text, the orange whisk, to the shape. I can do that by just starting to type. It's going to be careful that my capitalization and spelling are impeccably correct. Now I need to increase the font size of that text to 28 point. When I select the text, I get the nice little uh, quick access toolbar. So I can 
quickly change that size to 28. Now I'm going to select that picture. I need to resize it to 75% of its original size. Back to the Format tab, back to the Size group, and I'm going to open that Size dialog box. In this time, I'm not doing anything with absolute sizing. I am asked to do some things with a percentage. So I'm going to go down here to Scale, and instead of 140% of scale, I want it to be 75%. And the width and the height are both 75%. I will click OK. And that takes effect. Now recolor the picture using orange accent color to dark. That is the adjust group in the color tool. And I want orange accent to dark. Here we go. And on to sub-step C. I want to add an orange accent to border to this picture. In the picture styles group, there is a picture border tool and I can find the orange accent to color and put that into play. I now want to change the text wrapping, wrap text tool, to square and on to sub-step E where I am asked to move the picture to the right of that round rectangle. I hover over the picture until I get that four-headed arrow, left-click my mouse, and reposition the picture of the whisk to the right of the round diagonal corner rectangle. Everything looks good so far. Now in the address line, we are to insert a space after the phone number. So I want to very carefully make sure that my insertion point is immediately after the 8 in 2818 in that phone number. And I am going to carefully add a single space by going to the Insert tab and the Symbols group. I'm going to pull down the symbol and choose More Symbols. Now, the wingdings are what are showing right now on my screen. You want to use that tool to find symbols. And the symbol that we are told to use is numbered 183. We can see that that is a bullet. I'm going to insert. It's hard to see that anything happened, and you might uh, be compelled to keep hitting that insert over and over again. Do not do that. Simply close, and you can see that the bullet has been inserted after the phone number. Step six, convert the orangewisk.cengage.com hyperlink to regular text. The easiest way to accomplish this is to right click over that web address. And on the context menu, there's a remove hyperlink. Simply click and the hyperlink is gone. In the address line, we are asked now to apply the default bottom border. Home tab in the border section, we can choose that bottom border and it is done. Tab stops. If you do not have 
the ruler automatically showing on your page, then you will have to go to the view menu and click the box for the ruler to show. Once the ruler shows, you should notice up in the very left hand corner of the ruler that there is a little shape that looks like a, some people would call it a letter L, it's a right angle. And that happens to be the default for a tab stop. It turns out I need to have that insertion point in front of the N in November first. Now, with the tab tool already enabled, I'm now going to go over to the 4 inch mark, create the tab stop, now use the tab on my keyboard to tab the date over to that stop. Okay, now we have correctly created the tab. Now onto this table. If I click the little four-headed arrow symbol, I will see that I've selected the entire table and that table is broken up into little areas we call cells. And in the first row, there are actually two cells. We are being asked to merge those two cells together. Okay. So to do that, we want to go to the Layout tab. And we will see that there is a tool for merging cells. And I will click that, and those two cells will now be merged together. Second row of the table, select the entire second row, and we are asked to change the font to Calibri Light. It is now plain old Calibri, so we will find Calibri right either alphabetically or in my case it happens to be up here under recently used. And that is now done. Add a new row to the table. You can do that easily by putting your insertion point anywhere in the current last row of the table and then use the rows and columns group on that layout tab and insert below. You now have a new row in the table. Okay. We're asked to add some data. So I'm going to type funding. I'm going to tab and then type 56,806. Okay. You see when I tabbed again, another new row occurred. If that happens to you, you know you can always go up and undo and that erroneous row will disappear. There's just a few more steps, one of which is to create an entire uh, new table. I've already done that. And then a few more steps with formatting that table. I will let you complete those steps on your own, but I hope this has given you a really good start on this project.